My name is Amy Stepanovich. I am the Vice President for U.S. Policy at the Future of Privacy Forum. So I think cybersecurity is accurately perceived as the next frontier for um, defense. The big difference, I think, is that with cybersecurity, you're looking at trying to compromise communications of other state actors of threats that use the same infrastructure and systems as normal humans, which means you can't just go after those state actors or the people who you're targeting without necessarily compromising security much more broadly. So cybersecurity adds that extra dimension that you didn't necessarily have to take into account when you were looking at traditional defense. I think that one of the things that we really are going to have to think through is that computing capabilities are reaching a point where they're going to be able to trivially compromise security of what we consider today to be the most secure um, communications infrastructure, the most secure storage encryption out there. So if somebody is today intercepting communications and information, and we know governments do this as a routine matter, um, companies collect information and store it from competitors, and people will just decide that they want to collect information um, off the backbone of the internet, Today, that information is protected and properly encrypted, and as computing technology develops, it will be able to be compromised. And what does that mean for people? We haven't prepared people for thinking through the, the consequences of that. I actually think the similarities create a lot of opportunities for bad actors, um, as well as opportunities for protecting against bad actors. The EU and the US tend to be very good at trying to come together and find common ground, even when situations, laws, regulations um, put them at odds with one another. You can see this, we have the third, we just approved the third transatlantic data transfer agreement. They keep coming back together even when circumstances push them apart. That means when they're on the right track that they can help each other advance and do things better and more um, securely. But when they're on the wrong track, when they're doing things like, for instance, looking at how to undermine encryption for law enforcement access to data, they tend to exacerbate um, the problems and continue to look at different ways to undermine that security. And I think that puts us on a really negative trajectory. So getting um, the two jurisdictions on a good positive path, I actually think is one of the best ways to ensure really good cybersecurity. It's interesting to think through the fact that when you are looking at things from a security perspective, you're looking to see what data do you need access to in order to secure a network. When you're looking at privacy, you're trying to figure out how to protect that same data. So here you have a category where you need access to data. Here you have a category where you want to limit access to data. It's absolutely necessary that we start to map out what those categories look like and find a middle ground. And there is a middle ground there, and I'm not sure if we have really done that mapping exercise yet, but if we do that, I think that we're end up going to end up in a better position from both a privacy and a security perspective.